Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India estimation of critical Mach number to be precise the lower critical Mach number of an airfoil and our estimation will be on the basis of small perturbation theory that is it will be applicable to thin airfoils, but that is quite acceptable since uh, the airfoils used in aircraft are always thin. Now, we will first assume that we know the let us say the incompressible pressure distribution or the incompressible flow about the airfoil. So, estimation of critical Mach number. And our assumption is that <coughs> incompressible or say a low subsonic flow field is known. We know for a for an airfoil at incompressible or very low speed flow, we call it u infinity and m infinity is nearly 0 or 0. <laughs> we know that on the upper surface the flow accelerates up to some distance and then decelerates let us say in this part the flow accelerates and then it decelerates. in this part. <coughs> Consequently, there is higher suction on this front part. <coughs> so, in this part there is suction the pressure falls compared to the undisturbed steam pressure <coughs> and that there is a point at which the maximum suction or the maximum flow velocity occurs. So, one suction peak exist on the front part on the front part on upper surface <coughs> of course this suction peak point depends on the airfoil or the type of airfoil, but usually it is somewhat downstream of the leading edge. For our conventional airfoils that 4 digit 
Naka series, the suction peak is quite close to the leading edge. <coughs> and since you are assuming that the incompressible flow solution is known, the suction peak is known. So, let us say that we have the suction peak known. Let us say this is the suction peak. suction peak point or maximum velocity point. That is at this point the maximum velocity occurs. <laughs> And let us define that the pressure suction peak pressure coefficient so the pressure coefficient at that point at peak suction point. Let us see incompressible flow at peak suction point in incompressible flow we denote it say let us C P 0. <coughs> this is of course, the largest negative pressure coefficient on this airfoil <coughs> and let us say with increasing Mach number the flow pattern remains similar and the location of the suction peak point remains the same. So, as m infinity increases So, as m infinity increases from 0, the flow field qualitatively remains the same qualitatively similar with and the location of peak pressure now peak suction remain same. <coughs> of course, when you say that Mach number is increasing from 0, but we are implicitly implying that Mach number remains below the critical Mach number. That is the flow field that we are considering is fully or purely subsonic and within that limit the flow field remains qualitatively the same that is the streamline patterns and everything they are identical and the peak suction point also remain unchanged. However, the magnitude of this suction or pressure at any other point of course, changes 
and the change can be obtained using the linearized similarity rule as an example the parental glot rule. <coughs> so, for all these cases we can get the pressure coefficient from parental glot rule and we can <coughs> know what is the pressure distribution at some other Mach number within the critical Mach number range. <coughs> now, we also have seen earlier that as Mach number increases the flow velocity on the surface also increases. So, when the critical Mach number is reached the point that will become sonic is obviously this point. Since at this point the velocity is become maximum. So, this is the point that will become sonic when critical Mach number is reached. So, when m infinity reaches m critical velocity at the suction peak point becomes sonic. <coughs> that is let us a m infinity equal to m critical suction peak point is sonic point. <coughs> now, within this range of course, the flow is isentropic since you are considering only in visit flow and subsonic flow. So, there is no question of any change in entropy and we know for, for an isentropic flow for isentropic flow at the suction peak let us say the pressure is P. Or suction peak point or sonic point. So, let us denote this pressure to be P S. <coughs> Since the flow field is isentropic, we can have the relationship P S by P infinity, which can be written as the P 0 by P infinity by P 0 by P s. <coughs> now, since 
in an isentropic flow P0 is the stagnation pressure is constant total pressure and is constant in an isentropic flow. in isentropic flow. <coughs> now, these relations of course, we can substitute in terms of the Mach numbers P 0 by P infinity in terms of the local Mach number m infinity and similarly P 0 by P s in terms of the local Mach number m s. So, here the local Mach number is So, this now becomes 2 plus gamma minus 1 m square by 2 plus gamma minus 1 m infinity square to the power minus gamma by gamma minus 1. <coughs> this substituting that Mach number at the sonic point that is 1, we get this relation to since m s equal to 1 we have Two plus gamma minus one divided by two plus gamma minus one, and the m infinity in this case is now m critical. And this can be written as one plus gamma minus one into one minus m critical square by two plus gamma minus one. We also know that the m critical is close to 1 and consequently this 1 minus m critical is less than 1 and gamma minus 1 into 1 minus m critical square is less than 1. So, m critical is close to 1. close to unity hence gamma minus 1 into 1 minus m c r square is less than 1. <coughs> so, this second term in this expression the second term is less than 1.
considerably less than 1 <coughs> and we can expand this in binomial series in terms of power of 1 minus m c square neglecting the higher power. And <coughs> this then we get expanding in series and neglecting terms in higher power of what we get is P s by P infinity this becomes 1 minus the first term becomes gamma by gamma minus 1 into gamma minus 1 1 minus m critical square by 2 plus gamma minus 1 m critical square and these are all <coughs> neglected or we have P s minus P infinity by P infinity is minus gamma into 1 minus m critical square by 2 plus gamma minus 1 Now, we know the pressure coefficient C p at the suction point If you remember this is what is half rho infinity u infinity square and this then become two into one minus m critical square that is two by gamma m infinity square gamma gets cancelled by m infinity square and m infinity is m critical We should remember that in this case m infinity is m critical <coughs> now if we now apply prandtl blot similarity rule
we know this pressure at the suction point at the critical Mach number can be related to the incompressible flow pressure. The incompressible flow pressure I think we denoted by C P 0 by root over 1 minus m critical square. <coughs> this then if we substitute in the earlier relation we have minus C P 0 equal to 2 into 1 minus m critical square to the power 3 by 2 by m critical square into 2 plus gamma minus 1 in critical square. <coughs> in principle this can be solved since C P 0 is known <coughs> m critical can be solved from this equation. However, this is an implicit equation and finding the value is not straightforward, <coughs> but it can be solved quite easily. However, even a further simplification can be made which needs some sort of approximation of this equation. So, if we approximate it So, we can say further approximation can be made using that 1 minus m critical square is considerably less than 1. And <coughs> this then can be solved that One minus minus gamma minus one by two C P zero to the power two by three. <coughs> that is equal to 1 minus half into minus gamma minus 1 by 2 C P 0 to the power 2 by 3. <coughs> so, this is of course, an approximate form and little more accuracy can be obtained if we use the earlier relation that is this relation, 
more accurate estimate can also be obtained if we use a transonic similarity rule instead of Prandtl Glowart rule. So, you can say that for more accurate estimation, more accurate estimation can be obtained if some transonic similarity rule is used instead of Prandtl Gott rule. <coughs> that is if we replace this by some transonic similarity rule, this is replaced by some transonic similarity rule, we can get a better estimate of critical Mach number. However, this is <coughs> even the Prandtl Glott similarity rule is quite acceptable. <coughs> so, we have discussed how quite easily can an estimate of the lower critical Mach number or the critical Mach number can be obtained knowing the incompressible flow pressure distribution or in particularly the suction peak pressure and as you have mentioned earlier that estimating the lower critical Mach number is very important because that is the most preferred operation operational point at least for commercial airliners where it has the advantage of the higher speed without paying the penalty of larger drag. And hence it is attempted to increase the critical Mach number by careful designing of airfoil. So, we can see that any airfoil where the acceleration is very rapid as in case of say the 4 digit NACA, NACA series that the acceleration downstream of the leading edge is very rapid and the critical Mach number or the suction peak point is reached very quickly and the acceleration become even faster is if angle of attack is increased. So, if we change the shape of the airfoil so that, so that the acceleration is milder and little then we can have an airfoil in which the critical Mach number is still increased eventually this is the practice followed for designing the supercritical airfoils. <coughs> so, this is all about estimating the critical Mach number. Now, we will mention a few words about the solution of the transonic flow equations. We have earlier mentioned that the transonic flow equations even in small perturbation case are nonlinear and analytic closed form solutions are not readily available. However, in the earlier days some classical solutions are obtained using a particular approach known as hodograph transformation. Of course, we will not try to solve a problem using this hodograph formulation, but for the completeness of our discussion we will mention what this hodograph transformation is and how the hodograph transformation is applied to solve some of the classical pro problems 
and one such classical problem is flow past wedge with after body or flow past a wedge. <coughs> so, in hodograph transformation, <coughs> so the transformation is hodograph this transformation changes the role of dependent and independent variables. So, this changes the role of dependent and independent variables. that is in this context u v are treated as independent variables and x y are taken as dependent variables. <coughs> now, immediately the <coughs> point that comes to our mind that okay, if we change our geometric coordinates or the independent variables to be the dependent variable in this case and make the velocity components as our dependent independent variables, then our boundary condition must be expressed in terms of these new dependent variables or in terms of the new geometric the geometric coordinates. But usually the boundary conditions are known in the physical plane that is at given x and y we have the u and v known or the some condition is known, but the reverse is usually not true and is usually not even expressible and there lies the main difficulty of <coughs> this hodograph transformation technique. So, we say difficulty faced in using boundary condition. That is in the hodograph plane it is <coughs> usually not possible to express the boundary conditions except for some special cases and that wedge with an after body is such a special case in which the boundary condition perhaps can easily be expressed in the hodograph plane. <coughs> now, let us see how this transformation is applied. First of all consider the transgenic small disturbance equation consider transonic small disturbance equation and we had that equation 1 minus 
m infinity square d u d x plus d v d y and of course, we will be restricting to two dimensional the non linear condition in addition with the irrotational condition E rotationality condition <coughs> now to apply the transformation let us write and <laughs> using the chain rule then this gives us d u equal to u x d x plus u y d y and d v is v x d x plus v y d y, where the subscripts <coughs> x and y they denotes derivative with respect to x and y <coughs> that is u x equal to d u d x and so on. <coughs> now, Taking these as two algebraic equations, we can solve for dx and dy <coughs> and solving those two, we get dx is 1 by delta v y d u minus u y d v and d y is and delta is u x v y minus v x u y. Eventually, it is the Jacobian determinant, the Jacobian of the transformation
in the hodograph plane in the hodograph plane we have x as the dependent variable which is function of the independent variables u and v and similarly y is also a function of the two independent variables u and v. <coughs> this of course, gives d x equal to <coughs> x u d u plus x v d v and this gives d y is y u d u plus y v d v. Now, we can equate this d x d y with the d x d y obtained here. Now, equating these two sets of d x and d u d y what we get is x u to v y by delta x v equal to minus u y by delta y u is minus v x by delta and y v is u x y delta. <coughs> now, assuming that delta this delta Jacobian of the transformation is non zero that is the transformation is non singular. And you should remember that if at any point if delta becomes 0, then the transformation is not valid. <coughs> Substitution. of the ever values that is we now have this v y u x u y v x v y expressed in terms of x u x b y u y v and if we substitute these u x u y v x v y in the governing equation that is the transonic so small disturbance equation and the irrotationality condition <coughs> we get the governing equation becomes 1 minus 
m infinity square dy dv plus dx du equal to gamma plus 1 m infinity square by u infinity u into dy dv. <coughs> now, if you look to this equation, you see that this equation is now linear. There is no dependent variables multiplied with any of these terms. <coughs> So, this equation is now even though the equation looks almost the same, but this equation has changed its nature now. Here are the dependent variables x and y and there is no term in this equation where there is multiplication of two dependent variables <coughs> and the irrotationality condition becomes that becomes now d x d v minus d y d u equal to 0. These modified set of equations are known as the transformed equation is called Tricomi equation it is called the Tricomi equation <coughs> so what do you see that the in the hodograph transformation the governing equation has become linear. So, obviously, the solution is much simpler, but as in the beginning itself we have mentioned that the transforming the boundary condition is now extremely difficult and in most cases it cannot be done at all and hence these methods are not very useful or not very widely used. However, as we mentioned that in the earlier days some classical solutions are obtained by using this method. So, further the equation changes from elliptic to hyperbolic when 1 minus m infinity square minus gamma plus 1 m infinity square by u infinity into u equal to 0. <coughs> or when u by u infinity equal to 1 minus m infinity 
square by gamma plus 1 m infinity square. <coughs> so, we see that even the transformed equation has this property that it changes its nature from elliptic to hyperbolic which is of course, the nature of the physical problem of the transgenic flow. So, consequently that some difficulty of solving the transgenic flow is still remains in the hodograph plane because of changed nature of the flow. However, the equation is linear and solutions is comparatively easy, but as we mentioned that due to the application of the boundary or transforming the boundary condition is so nigh on impossible that the method of photograph plane solution is restricted to only a few classical problems that wage with after body is one such example. However, we will not pursue that solution and we will discuss our discussion on transgenic flow concluded <coughs> at this stage. <coughs>